Are you struggling to learn Tableau? Do you want to understand the core concepts of Tableau? Then you have come to the right place. Hi, I'm Bindu Kumar and I welcome you to this channel. In this video, I'll give you a beginner's demonstration of Tableau. We will start by creating connections, adding data and creating simple visualizations. By the end of this video, you'll feel confident in creating a simple visualization all by yourself. This video is just one part of a series of videos on Tableau. So make sure you subscribe. So in today's session, we are going to look at an introduction to Tableau. I'm going to explain to you what are the building blocks of Tableau? Um, you know, how do you start, um, you know, using Tableau for creating data visualizations? So this will be part of a series of videos that we will be making on Tableau. But in today's video, we are going to focus on the initial demonstration, the initial building blocks such as connections, dimensions, measures, adding tables, joins and so on. All right, so let's get started. So I hope all of you have seen the previous video that I uploaded where uh, we had instructions on how to install Tableau public. Right. So if not, please, you know, pause this video, go back to that video, make sure you install Tableau and also download the sample files and then you can resume this one. So you'll see that I just launched Tableau on Windows. Now this is a Tableau public. Now what I want you all to observe is Tableau has been built from the ground up for non-technical users, right? So it's an out and out tool that has been built for business users or let me say for any kind of users, whether somebody comes with a technical background or non-technical background. Okay. So if you have this in mind, it's very easy to understand, um, you know, how the tool has been built and how it sort of helps you or guides you towards building data visualizations. So this is the landing page of Tableau public. You will immediately notice that on the left side is this panel, right? Which is in a darker shade than the rest of the part of the Tableau public. Well, that is because it is trying to get your attention to, to say that, okay, the first thing that you need to do is you need to connect to a data source. Okay. This being Tableau public, it is limited in terms of connections or, or the data sources that it can connect to. So you see all these five, uh, you know, supported formats like Excel, text file, JSON and, and, and so on. There are few more that it can connect to, uh, to a server like Google Drive, OData and Web Data Connector. But for this session, we are going to look at the text file, right? So just uh, click on the text file and you must have already detect, uh, downloaded some files from the previous uh, video or, or rather from the Git repository. In case you haven't done it, you will find it in this video description, the link to the Git repository from where you can download these files. So I'm going to select this particular file, Fact Internet Sales. Click on open. So this is always the first step in any data visualization, not only Tableau, which is to connect to the data source where your data is. In this case, it's a CSV file, but in different scenarios, maybe you have your data in a database. You may have your data in uh, in an Excel file, right? Or any in any other format like XML or JSON. Okay. So now that I have selected a file, you will see that a new connection has been added and it has taken me to a tab called data source. So right now we are in the data source tab. You can see a connection that has been added and the file that we selected, the CSV file, it appears here as a table. Okay. And he, here you can see some, uh, some information. It says drag tables here to relate them, right? So the, the first table that we selected has been added and you see two informations here on the left side, you see the metadata, right? So you see the field name. Also, you see the, uh, the, the, the name of the file or the name of the table. So if this was a database, then this would have been the column names and this would have been name of the, of the table, right? But since we are using a CSV file, this is the name of the file 
and this is the name of the uh, the columns within the file and then you also have the remote field name so what is this remote field name this is the name that appears in the file as in the header and what you see here is tableau's way of giving it a friendly name okay so for those of you who have uh, experience on the on on any of the reporting tools you would know that what we do is when there is a column that has to be printed in a report we don't print the column name as is we always like to beautify them in uh, to make it more reader friendly right to make it more readable and that's precisely what tableau is doing for you automatically right so instead of product key which is one word we are keeping product space key right so it, be, it becomes two words now and it is easier to read especially for a non technical person okay so that's about the uh, the field name and the remote field name and then you will also see the type you see the type is nothing but tableau's interpretation of what this data type is all about so if you see a hash it is an it is some kind of a number this if you see it looks like a calendar right so this could be a date or a date time field okay and if you see abc it is a string so there are many more data types we will get into that later so the left side you see the metadata of the table that you have added which could be very very useful for you when you are starting to uh, you know explore the data on the right side you can actually see a preview of the data right so you can see the actual data that has been pulled in from the file so you have the product key column and uh, there are many other columns as well order order date key due date key and so on so if i just uh, scroll towards the right i can get a feel of whether the data has been parsed and loaded correctly right and if it's okay for me to proceed further all right and here it's also showing the count of rows so right now it's just displaying just a, a sample few records and here you can see uh, 26 fields so there are 26 attributes and 60398 rows now analysis from one table is rarely useful right you always want to add uh, more data to this so let's add the dim customer so you see as i drag as i drag tableau tries to define a relationship or a join between them right now i dropped it it takes few seconds to add this data set here and also define a join okay so now that the second table is added which is the customers you'll see the first thing is it highlights the join here right so it has automatically interpreted a join and the join is from the fact table from the fact internet sales table it has selected the customer key and on the customers table it has also selected the customer key and the type of join is a equi join right so uh this is a uh, tableau's way of automatically joining two tables when you add them to the layout right now how does this join work there are uh, many different rules right many different preferences so the first thing it does is it checks if there are two columns that share the same name between the tables right so it sort of interprets the relationship between the two data sets and it will and it will uh, suggest that as the join condition however you always have the um, let's say uh, you you can always override that permission uh, the the join condition so so if you think that customer key is not the right column it should be based on some other column then you can always choose from this drop down right you can select completely different column so here what is important to note is when somebody is using tableau one must be aware of the data model right many people uh, you know uh, misunderstand that okay you know tableau will do the join for you so you don't have to know anything about the data model but that is an that is incorrect that's a misconception tableau totally relies on the user 
it expects that the user is also able to understand the data model and validate it. Okay, although Tableau is doing few things for you automatically, you should be able to validate them and say that, okay, this is right or this needs to be changed. So now we have defined a relationship between the two CSV files. And then on the right side, you can see the data uh, of the uh, customer. Notice that when you select the join, right, when you select the relationship, you get the relationship information here. But if you want to see the metadata of the customer's table, you need to explicitly click on the table. And then you see the entities or, or rather, sorry, the, the attributes of the customer table. Again, here you will see the field name, you will see the remote field name, and uh, you will see that uh, Tableau is uh, doing its magic here as well, which is it is uh, splitting up those uh, or, you know, this one word into multiple words. So it is easier to read by the user. OK, and then you can see the data. So here you can quickly scroll um, across and just see that, OK, you know, uh, all the data looks fine. Now with this, let us proceed to the next stage of data visualization. OK, so next stage we will see uh, uh, what can we do uh, with this data? What are the kind of visualizations that we can create? Now, before we proceed, are there any questions so far? OK, all right. So again, if you if you notice here, Tableau is sort of giving you a hint. It's saying, OK, go to this worksheet, right? So you connect it to a data source. You have added few tables. You have defined the join between them. Now go to the sheet one. And if you look at this, it says go to worksheet. Worksheet, sheet one, these are all derivatives from Excel, right? So Microsoft Excel is something that is used across uh, you know, millions of people are familiar with it. And Tableau wanted to use that, right? They wanted to leverage that familiarity. So they have built Tableau in a way where it is familiar with uh, tools that you have used before, right? Or you currently use as well. Okay, right. So now we'll click on this sheet one. Okay. So this is where you create the data visualizations, all right? This uh, this uh, uh, dashboard panel. What I want to do first is I want to create a visualization very, very quickly and show you how powerful Tableau is. Okay, then I'm going to, uh, you know, sort of undo it and then uh, break down the different steps that we did, right? How it works, what are we supposed to do and so on. Okay, so now let me create a visualization very quickly. So suppose we want to understand the sales amount, right? The, the sales by the attributes of a customer. And in this case, we want to look at how a customer's education and occupation influence the sales, right? So in less than 10 seconds, I was able to create a visualization where I can immediately see that customers who have bachelors as their education and who have professional occupation, they are contributing to the maximum of sales, which is $4 million, All right? So it's that quick to visualize something in Tableau, right? Or suppose I want to change this visualization into something like a heat map. And uh, let's change the colors. and also change the size, all right. So this also shows a similar information, right? But in sort of a cross tab, right? So you have a cross tab where you have education in uh, in rows and uh, the occupation in the columns. And at the intersection of each, you can see the sales amount, right? And again, by looking at this, I can quickly identify the top three, right? I can see that bachelor's and professional, 
right? Followed very, very close by bachelor's and management and partial college and professional, right? So this is the power of data visualization, being able to derive insights from the data very, very quickly. Okay. Now I want to show you how this works, right? What are the things that you have to do? What are the things that Tableau does for you in order to create such visualizations, right? Okay. So the first thing we added connections, we added tables, and then we defined the relationship between them, right? Where does that all go? Now here you will see that they appear here, right? All the attributes appear here. So you have the dim customer or actually let me start with the fact internet sales because this is the first table that we added. So the table appears as this, right? It has carry forwarded the name of the file from where it originates. But look at the attribute names. The attribute names still retain the the uh, the uh, the readability of it, right? The Tableau uh, did in the data source. Now suppose you want to rename it, which is better, right? So we can say uh, fact internet sales, right? Similarly, the dim customer, let us rename it. We'll remove this dot CSV because it might be consume, uh, it, it might be confusing for your, for our users. So we'll change it to dim customer. Okay. So now these are called the tables right and these are the attributes between them now let's look at the dim customer dim customer you will see all the attributes along with the data types so we already looked at a couple of them abc stands for string right and this is a calendar uh, anywhere you see a hash it's a number okay so here what i want to say is when you look at a database, a database has so many different data types. Within uh, within uh, a string, you have care, where care, in where care, text, and so on, right? Uh, within numbers, you have float, double, integer, decimal, and, and many others. Within date, you have date, time, date time, timestamp, timestamp with time zone, without time zone. So there's a lot of variety. Again, Tableau engineers understood, I mean, you know, the people who built Tableau, they realized that if you have to really make this tool successful, you have to hide away all this complexity to the users, right? So which is why I've been, you know, saying that this tool has been built from the ground up to be user friendly, right? So you will have to hide away many of this technical complexity. So what they did is they took all those complex data types and they simplified into a very, very short list of data types, okay? Which is why you just see few of them and then the very nice thing that they've done is they haven't given a name to this data type. Instead, they've given it an icon and using that icon, you can immediately understand what the data type is, okay? So you see ABC, you see this calendar, you see the hash, which is a number, okay? Now, this is a question for all of you. What do you think this one is? This is a T pipe F. Which data type do you think this represents? Text. Image. No. Or PDF. I'm, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Uh, one, one kind of PDF, one type of PDF. No, so no, no, the, the question is, see, uh, okay, so, so you said text. Text is already represented here by ABC. So what is this T pipe F? What is this data type? I think it says concatenation of text. Mm, no. There is a reason why none of you are able to give the right answer because we are all thinking from a technical perspective, right? You're all from a database background. Okay. T pipe F 
it stands for true or false okay so it's a boolean data type right so if i if i say boolean or binary that's something that you will understand right but if you say boolean or binary to a to a non technical user uh, he or she may not understand right so t pipe f is tableau's language of saying it is a boolean data type okay all right so that that's fine i mean these are things that that you learn as you are uh, as you as you are learning tableau all right so um, so th this is boolean again you know there are a bunch of attributes uh, that are string now you notice this line here right so for some reason the attributes have been segregated right into two separate sections and below the line all the attributes that you see are integers right or some some kind of a numeric value so here it could be a mix it could be a decimal float double integer small int big int for tableau none of that matters for tableau everything is a everything is numeric that's what it is right all the numeric data types will have the hash uh, hash as the representation okay now if that is truly the case that all the numeric data types are kept below this in, in the second section and all the non numeric is in the above section then why do we see geography key why do we see customer key why are these appearing in the top section and not in uh, among this list can anyone guess okay so the the reason is you see when you take a table and when you look at numeric versus non numeric columns the numeric columns there will be some columns that look numeric but actually are not numeric let me give you an example if you take um, if you take let's say the customers table right um maybe here uh, that attribute is not there but okay so let me let me give you an example but uh, it's not related to this okay assume there is a customers table in the customers table look at age age as an attribute now age what will be the values there these will be numbers right it may be single digit or it may be double digit but this will be numbers this is an example of a proper integer based attribute in the same table you might have something like customer id okay customer id it is a number right it may be something like 3372 3373 and so on but is it really something that can be used for let's say uh, aggregating for example age you can do an average of it correct you can you can you can do an average of age you can do a min and max of age right so that it makes sense but if you have something like a customer id can you do a summation of it can you do an aggregate of it no it doesn't make sense correct so although it is an integer it really cannot be used for measuring anything okay so look at all of these attributes now total children number of children at home these are numbers number of cars owned now take take this numbers of cars owned we can say do a summation of number of cars owned for a number of customers then finally we can say that there are 500 cars owned by the 700 customers right and it makes sense you can also say what is the average number of cars owned by uh, by all our customers in a particular region so these are numbers that represent something that can be measured measured by uh, either summation by average by minimum by maximum and so on however look at customer key customer key is also a number but there is no value in doing any kind of aggregation over it right if you do a summation maximum minimum it makes absolutely no sense you will get some data but that data is meaningless okay so here is where you have to understand 
the beauty of tableau you see tableau engineers understood that in a properly designed data model you will come across such attributes and if people follow a certain standards of naming then those attributes will have let's say key at the end of it right key will be a part of such such column names so the moment tableau detects such columns right it will move them away from this measure section into the regular attribute section okay not only that the attributes that you would have used for defining the join such attributes like so for example here uh, what did we use we used the customer key from both sides for defining a join so the moment you do it tableau will automatically exclude it exclude it from the measure section and move it to the attribute section so that you don't use it for any kind of calculation okay all right so let me pause here are there any questions okay all right if there are no questions let's continue so a similar thing has been done on the fact internet sales table as well you'll see all the numerical attributes which don't participate in any kind of join or uh, primary key or foreign key such attributes are uh, are appearing in the second section right in the section at the bottom and all the non integer attributes like uh, order date due date or which are you know either a date or a date time right so all of these appear at the top then you also have some integer attributes like customer key currency key uh, promotion key so tableau interprets that okay you know this is probably a key column and not a, a not a number to be measured hence it keeps it here again going by the you know uh, what i told in the joins which is tableau interprets the joins but it is your responsibility to validate it and if there's a mistake you will have to correct it so the same applies here as well so if you feel that this revision number for whatever reason is not an attribute instead it is a measure it is a proper number then you can always right click on it and you can say convert to measure so the moment you do that it appears here or if you want to or if there is a measure that uh, that actually needs to be an attribute then you can right click and you can say convert to dimension okay so dimensions and measures are a, a big topic altogether it's 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 a very vast and detailed topic i'll probably be covering it in uh, another future session okay so this is about the attributes and the measures okay now i i i want to talk a little bit about what are these dimensions right what are dimensions and what are measures right so to do that let me just clear this dashboard here and uh, what we will do is we will just add the sales amount so notice what i did here i just double clicked on the sales amount and a sales amount appears here i change this visualization to a text table so it's just showing me the grand total now i'll remove the sales amount and let me add uh, let's say the customer first name okay so why is it that when i add the sales amount i only get a single row but when i add the first name it shows me all the distinct values okay so that is where you have to understand the concept of a dimension and a measure right so a dimension represents or or rather uh, let me start with the with the measure a measure in this case is the sales amount it represents something that can be measured okay something that can be quantified for example if there are two sales so let's say 
you go to a uh, you go to a supermarket and you buy something right and um, your friend also goes to the same supermarket and she also buys something if the sales amount is not captured what is the difference between let's say your sales event and your friend's sales event absolutely nothing right so there has to be some kind of a metric or a measure or a number that gives you that difference okay so in this case sales amount sales amount is that measure that gives a difference so for example you can say okay i shop for 300 dollars my friend shop for 450 dollars so now you have a difference something that you can compare right on one end you have 300 on another you hand uh, you have 450 dollars without this information there's literally no difference between the two sales events so a measure is something that helps you give a weight to the two different events right so the 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 two sales now have different weights based on the sales amount so a measure is anything that gives you this kind of a weight between the two different events and when you have a measure what tableau does is when you when you add a measure by default it applies some kind of an aggregation towards it okay so here you it, you will see that by default it is applying the aggregation of summation right so it it adds up all the values that are here and it uh, it shows you the grand total okay now i want to ask all of you a question you are seeing this number which is 29 million dollars the question is do you think this 29 million dollars data that you are seeing it appears as a single row in the file yes or no no that is correct right so the data that you are seeing here if this is an aggregation that is happening on the fly right this number is being generated on the fly so you can right click on this data and you can see view data and it opens up this uh, this pop up you will see the summary but it also shows you where is this data actually coming from and when you click on it you can see the individual sales amount from all the 60000 records we have uh, of the sales right so all of these sales sale amounts from the different uh, sales orders they're all being added up to give you this number of 29 million dollars okay so this is about uh, this is about the the measure okay uh, like i said this is a very vast topic i am not going to talk about it in detail there will be a separate session for understanding dimensions and measures now let's look at dimensions right so uh, on on one end you have measures on another hand you have dimensions so what we'll do is we will just double click on the english occupation here so now you will see that we have occupation and the sales amount the sales amount is now automatically broken down or grouped by the occupation so what is a dimension dimension in simple words is anything that gives a context to a sales amount or, or to to a measure okay so if i have to if i just remove the occupation we have 29 million dollars in sales this information all by itself is least useful for you right what is this 29 million dollars was it the sales last week was it the sales last month was it the sales across uh, um, uh, you know uh, all my let's say furniture sales was it uh, across cosmetics what exactly is this right see a measure by itself doesn't give any value you always have to add some context to it right you have to ask okay this is sales by which product this is sales by which uh, geography with this is sales by which date right so you see we have used products uh, date and region and so on all of these become dimensions 
so if I add occupation, now it makes some sense. Now I can see that, okay, the $29 million sales that I see, this is how it is distributed for, let's say the occupation, or let's say I want to look, look at it by education. So I'll drag and drop the occupation back to the panel and double click the education. So now I can see the distribution by education. Or if I want to look at something else, like maybe how is the gender and the marital status of the customer influencing the sales, right? So a dimension with its attributes give meaning to the data, which is otherwise meaningless. A number taken just at a grand total level has absolutely no value. You always have to group it and slice and dice it by the different attributes. And those attributes are defined as your dimensions. Okay. And what you will see in Tableau is all your dimensions are represented by a blue pill. Okay. Now I'm not sure uh, whether the colors on my screen are being captured properly in the video. Okay. Uh, in case you don't see it, I mean, you can try it on your, your, uh, you know, on your Tableau public, the dimensions always are in blue color. Okay. These are called pills, pills as in, as in tablets, medicine, right? Since it's of the shape of a pill, it's called a pill. And a measure is always in a uh, in, in a green color. Okay. It's a, it's a green pill. Notice measures appear here on the, uh, on the marks panel, whereas any dimensions you add appear here. And by default, Tableau tries to create a cross tab for you when you add multiple attributes, but you can again override it. You see now everything is being displayed as rows, right? Or you want to display everything as column. That's also fine. Okay. All right. So this is about the, uh, the dimensions and measures, and you will, you will see that, uh, that concept being applied everywhere, right? So this, this segregation of the attributes that I was talking about is nothing but Tableau's way of uh, identifying which are the dimensions in a data set and which are the measures. So here is where, uh, you have to understand that. Tableau has been built for a data warehouse or uh, as we say analytics, right? In analytics, this is what is, this is what we do day in, day out. We don't look at, we don't look at detailed information, right? We don't look at what are the individual sales orders, um, um, you know, that, that were done, right? Instead, analytics users are always interested in the numbers. How many sales? right? Instead of, instead of asking, show me the hundred sales that happened yesterday. We are always asking, uh, analytical questions. We are measuring the business. So we ask how many sales by which region, by which customer, uh, which, by which department, by which customer age group and so on. Okay. All right. So let me pause here. Are there any questions? Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about the data visualization. Okay. So for that, I'll just uh, reset this panel. Notice on the top, right? There is this panel called show me. It is hidden by default. You'll have to click on it and then you can see some, some chart types here. Right now it's all grayed out. And as you hover over each chart at the bottom, there is some information, right? For every chart that you hover. So it says for a Gantt view, try at least one date attribute, one or more dimensions, zero or two measures. This is the prerequisite. So this is Tableau's way of saying that in order to create a Gantt chart, these are the minimum things you need without which it will not be highlighted. Okay. So the same for a text table. So text table is your, uh, your, um, let's say the most primary kind of inter, uh, uh, data visualization, right? You're just printing the data in a table. 
suppose we add occupation the moment we add it then you can see that the text table is highlighted which wasn't earlier right now it is highlighted it's saying that since you have added one dimension these are the visualizations that you can use or these are the visualizations that are still not available let's add a metric i added order quantity the moment i added this the show me bar uh, you know a lot of lot of these charts are now available to you you have a pie chart you have uh, what is this? this is a highlight table you have a heat map and you have a bubble chart and so on so let me select a this pie chart right, there you go right so you can see that it automatically converted this uh, this table that you had into a pie chart if you want to create a highlight table right so here what i want to highlight is before tableau creating such charts and graphs was very difficult okay i'm not sure how many of you have used uh, let's say excel 1997 98 2000 right um, so excel of course was the first tool to come out with uh, with uh, these charting capabilities but it definitely wasn't as easy as this you see when somebody had to create a pie chart or a, or a line graph one had to have experience in setting up the series setting up the labels formatting them right and there were a ton of options and there was no way one could create it unless he or she took the help of someone else right or relied on some kind of a, a tutorial and back then there were no youtube as well so it was very difficult to create a, a different kind of a chart especially if you had never worked on it before for, so for someone uh, you know who had worked on let's say creating a pie chart right it would have been easier for them but if you suddenly ask them to create a line graph or a 3d graph or a packed bubble it would have been very difficult all right so that is where Tableau took on that problem statement when designing this product. They said that in order to create a visualization, one does not need to have prior knowledge, right? One needs to be able to create, let's say, a minimum, a minimum chart, which can later be customized. And for that, what they understood is what was missing in Excel and other tools was this prerequisite what do you need in order to create a line graph what is it that you need in order to create let's say a box and whisker plot this sort of guidance did not exist so which is when tableau came up with this feature where based on the attribute and the dimensions uh, sorry uh, the dimension measures that you add it highlights which are the graphs that are visible to, uh, that can be used for this data okay so now you see that with just one attribute and uh, one measure it is saying all the different kind of uh, charts that i can probably use but let's say i wanted to use this scatter plot right and i'm trying to see okay why it's not I'm, I'm not able to use it and that's when tableau says that okay for a scatter plot for a scatter plot you need not one measure but a minimum of two measures a minimum of two measures and a maximum of four measures okay so now let us look at this uh, this heat map i want to show you um, heat map or let's say the packed bubbles i think that's a better example all right so packed bubbles using this i can explain how visualization is used here okay so there are few characteristics that you have to observe one is the size of the of the bubbles right so the size as you can guess is being influenced by what by the say by the order quantity right so in this example we have order quantity so the size is being uh, influenced by the order quantity and the color is being influenced by what by the occupation right so now that is what data visualization is all about in data visualization 
you want to use geometric shapes and you want to influence the size of it, the color of it, the shape of it by different attributes. To show you what I'm talking about, you see this English occupation and it is right now influencing the color card. I'm going to remove it. Notice what happens. See now nothing is influencing the color. So it's all the same color. Now, can you imagine what will happen if I remove this, the order quantity and it's influencing the size as you can see. See, everything is the same size now, which is a default size. Okay. So this is how Tableau works. I mean, this is, this is one of the, uh, the basics of Tableau for every visualization. It's just a matter of figuring out how you want to influence the different characteristics of that visualization. So now let us try to get it back again. Okay. So we already have the English occupation. What we will do this time, let's drag the sales amount, the sales amount into the size of the visualization. Okay. Now, let us influence the color also. Okay. So we, are, we want to say that, okay, uh, since these are different occupations, we want to assign a different color for each of the occupation. In which case, where's the occupation? It's here. You can drag and drop it on where? On the color. Okay. And uh, as you hover over it, you see a tooltip, right? It shows the occupation and the sales amount for each. But what if we wanted additional values here? Now look at the card. You see this tooltip, right? There's already something called as a tooltip here. Now let us scroll down. I will also add the order quantity into this tooltip. So when you do that, there is no change to the visualization, right? Nothing that's visible. But if you hover over it, do you see the additional attribute of order quantity also visible here? Right? So this is at the principle of any data visualization. So you see data visualization in simple words is nothing but representation of data through geometric shapes where the size, the color and other characteristics of the visualization is influenced by attributes and measures. Okay. So that's what visualization is all about and Tableau and other tools like uh, Power BI, Click View, uh, SciSense, Looker, uh, Superset, all of these tools work on a similar, uh, you know, similar methodology, right? They also have features that are, that are very, very similar to this. So if you can understand that, that core basics, of how a data visualization tool works, then picking up any data visualization tool becomes easier. Okay. All right. So I think with this, we can come to the end of the session. I hope that this information was enough to, you know, sort of spark an interest to learn these data visualization tools. We will follow up with more sessions where we will deep dive into Tableau. We will look at, uh, um, you know, many more advanced features that are that are there in Tableau. So now we can open it up for a Q and A. Yes, go ahead. So as we drag and drop all the attributes here, no. So is there any kind of SQL being generated uh, that we can see, uh, like how this works in background? Good question. Yes. Uh, in this case, I may not be able to show you the SQL because uh, the data source here are files, right? So you can't write SQL to a file, but uh, I can ex definitely tell you what is happening in Tableau. What Tableau does is whenever you add a data source, it, it, uh, it has its own interface through which it will fetch all the data and all of this data that we are seeing from the fact table and the customer table, they are either kept in the memory or in the cache of Tableau. Okay. So Tableau has its own sort of uh, uh, on disk or on memory cache where this data is stored. And every time we are uh, using it in the visualization, 
it is coming from the cache, not from the files. So that is why it's faster. Otherwise, any changes to the visualization will not be this fast. Okay, so Tableau has its own local cache. Maybe in the in the in the later sessions, uh, I will show you the query that Tableau generates. Okay, when you connect to a database, definitely we can see um, the the queries being generated by Tableau. Any more questions? So was this easy to follow or was it too fast? Uh, it was followable. Followable, okay. So the, see the, the, the best way to uh, remember some of these concepts is doing a hands-on yourself, right? Try this, uh, uh, install Tableau, download these files from Git and uh, spend some time, uh, which is why I didn't squeeze in too much information on day one. Okay, because I just wanted you to get a feel of the the the, the initial things that are need that that needed to be done. Okay, uh, so once you do, once you spend a couple of hours, once you get comfortable with this, then uh, then picking up Tableau will become a lot easier. Okay, all right. So I suppose there are no further questions. Uh, then if there's none, then I guess we can uh, we'll close the call. I am happy you watched the video till the end. I sincerely hope you liked it. If you really did like the demo, then please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and colleagues, and please do subscribe. It sometimes takes an entire day to plan, record, and edit a video like this. You can support me by subscribing to my channel and donating to me via Super Thanks feature. Thank you and see you in the next video.